Well, quite frankly, I, I see it as there's three aspects to the referendum. There's the historical and cultural aspect of it. There's the democratic aspect of it. And there's the economic aspect of it. Uh, what brought me into this way of thinking was the historical and cultural side of it. And I would like to just run a few things that most people don't actually know. Uh, why I think that Scotland would be better off on its own. We'll go right back to the wars of independence and the Declaration of Arbroath, which a document one of the most important documents in the history of the world, or the Western world as we know it, insofar as it took power, gave power to the people, and away from the, the kings of the country, insofar as the king only could rule with the consent of the people, albeit as the, the centuries went on, that slightly changed. But that was what was the basis of the Declaration of Arbroath. We we'll fast forward history a wee bit to when Cromwell was on the go and Cromwell had 3,000 prisoners in Ireland which he put to the sword. He ended up with 10,000 Scottish prisoners and some Welsh prisoners which his father-in-law, uh, John Hamden, persuaded him to sell to the colonies as slaves. So Cromwell in effect sold off 10,000 Scots to the Americas as slaves. Now, these Scots were well educated, they were soldiers, and the Americans, once they got them, discovered that they, they were better educated, they could read, they could read the Bible to them, etc. These were all important things to the people at the time. They were also fighting men insofar as they had uh, battle experience, so they were very useful. But at the time, uh, Parliament, uh, Cromwell's Parliament, it was suggested that all Scots, all Scots men should be castrated. It was also suggested that if they were going to be spared, there's too many of them shouldn't be together. So as time went on and the Americans wanted their independence, it was mainly Scots that were at the forefront or Scots-Americans. 50% uh, of the people that signed the Treaty of Independence for the Americas were Scots or Scots ancestors. Fast forward that, in the First World War, the Battle of the Somme, 50% of the casualties were Scots. Based on that, when the Americas were coming into the war, when the United States were coming into the First World War, Woodrow Wilson in his speech wrote that every, said that every page of American history has been written in Scottish blood. And based on that, the United States come into the First World War. Now, it seems to me that we've been used as battle fodder. The Scots have been used as battle fodder. And one of the things, and mod we'll bring it up to modern day Scotland now, one of the things I find most important is that young Scottish men and women shouldn't get involved in any wars that we don't approve of. In other words, the Cabinet, or I should say the Parliament in Edinburgh, should have the right to say where and when young Scots men and women are going to go and fight and die. So that's my reasons, my principal reasons for wanting to